All right. Good morning. Hello. Lorna Dune is back. I haven't even started my day and I have to talk about this. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I still have a goddamn pimple patch on. I, uh, I'm doing this in StreamYard because it is before work. Uh, my third in a row, I have to do so much stuff before I go to work today. And you might be saying, Alyssa, then why are you filming this? It's because I'm so busy that if I don't do this now, it will never happen. At least if I do this, I might be able to edit it and get it up quickly. So uh, my good friend, I say this very lightly, Lorna Dune is was back on the Twitter, the book talk, not the Twitter. I don't talk, I don't, I do not mess with Twitter. Book Twitter is terrifying. Twitter is terrifying. Um, but our little friend, Lorna Dune, she has a name. It's on the TikToks. If you want to look her up, feel free. I'm not trying to be mean to the girl. Um, I secretly think she thinks I'm calling her a cookie because uh, that would make her whole, why don't you read classics argument? Just so great. But anyway, so apparently between leaving like Spain and getting here, like she has kept going with all of this. And I get it because like she's gotten a lot of backlash. I mean, for the love of Christ, I'm on here like making videos about her. But she's made like four, at least four more videos about all of this. And <clears throat> I want you to just kind of like prepare for some whiplash. Because like remember her like first initial video? Uh I'm up before my alarm. Uh, remember her first initial video. Let me like find that and just put this up here. Um, so that we don't forget who she is in case for some reason you didn't watch that original video. Uh, because there's a tone, and this is my point, there's a tone here that is important. Because I don't think people would be as mad if the question was being asked in a different way. But her questions are being asked in a certain tone. And I want you to watch as that tone shifts. So, like, here's video one. Thing yeah. about book talk is that you will read a book that they recommend. So good. So great. Mm, the relationship. Mm, enemies to lovers. You read it. And you're like, what? Like, what is that? Like, it's so mean. The tone is just so condescending. And I, I think that that is a huge part of why everybody has reacted the way that they had. Wow. You refuse to read classic literature. Not a question. It's a statement. I can tell. Like, that's, it's, it's mean. Like, she's being really mean about it. And that's when people are mad. And in my video, I talked about how I think her real problem is with, like, smut talk. And let me tell you, I think I was right because all of her video responses are really still heavily focused on romance because she's not understanding why somebody would want to read romance. And this, the new stuff that she's going down, the new road she's going down is about, she's not understanding that like people can read for pleasure and entertainment and for the sake of reading without having to be overly critical and that you can read things that could be read critically and still enjoy them without reading them critically, if that makes any sense to anybody, because it makes sense in my brain. But I'm just going to quickly go through these because I need to get back to writing because it is NaNoWriMo. I don't have time for this nonsense, but yet I'm making it because procrastination is a thing. Also, um, best mug, eat glitter for breakfast and shine all day. Let's go. So here's the first video that I saw that popped up on my TikTok feed when I woke up way too early this morning. Hey, I clicked you. And there is no second interpretation to these words. Sorry. Question for all the book talk girlies. And there is no second interpretation to these words. I am not implying anything. Why are you yelling at us? I don't understand why she's yelling at us. But wait, she's going to switch tack so fast. You're going to get whiplash. Get ready, my friends. There's going to be not in this one. Next video. And then the next video. It's going to just it's just. Yeah. Straight up, I'm asking this. No implications. People were like, what if I like to read for fun? What if I only read for fun? What if I read for escapism? Which is all cool, whatever, right? But I was like, I was I'm, I was thinking about it. I was like, if I went up to somebody and they were like, I like watching movies. And I was like, what kind of movies do you like watching? And they were like, Marvel movies. And I was like, okay, what, what do you like about the Marvel movies? And they were like, it's fun. And I'm like, that's, what about, what else do you like? 
There's literally what what more do you have to like about a Marvel movie? The only other thing I'm going to tell you about a Marvel movie that makes me like it is that like Groot's adorable and I want to bang some of the characters. So Marvel's what you picked. I just feel like pick a different argument. Like Yeah, Marvel's something you watch for fun. It doesn't need to be deeper. It can be. Both are valid. About watching movies. Like, what do you like about that? And they were like, it's entertaining. Like, that's valid. But, like, what about the rest of it? It's not like she said, well, why do you like Schindler's List? Oh, because it's fun and entertaining? I would be questioning a lot of things if you're like, that's a fun and entertaining movie. We like Guardian of the Galaxies because it's funny. And it's entertaining. And despite some of his many problematic views, Chris Pratt is fucking hot. <sighs> Same goes for everybody who is like, I only read spicy books. I only read corn. And I'm like, okay, well, do you like reading books? or? We're going to back up because I think I stopped her at a wrong spot. But like corn, I think it's funny because I just think of the band every time. Spicy books. I only read corn. And I'm like, okay, well, do you like reading books? Or is there a separate part of that activity that you prefer more? No, you can just like reading books. What is the separate part of that activity? I'm just not understanding. I think my issue is like, I don't understand what she wants us to say. Because we're not all literary critics. We're also not all people that go on here to review books critically. Like, I have... I recently finished The Waves and I can talk to you about The Waves critically or I can just tell you that like the overall feeling of this book made me feel amazing because Virginia Woolf has a way with words that is almost hypnotic, especially when it's being read to you. I feel like Virginia Woolf made into audiobook form is like having spoken word poetry. It for me, it gives me the same feels. Do you, is that enough for you? Like is that is that enough? of a justification for reading because I just, I just don't know if any of us are ever going to articulate it in a way that's going to get to whatever point in her brain, whatever like little like peg hole we need to fill in her brain to answer this question, to make her feel like it's okay for people to read for fun is ever going to get filled. I don't know how you articulate it in that way. I don't know because she's so angry about this and I don't know why you're so angry. Let's go on. Neither of those are like a diss. I'm just saying like if you you say you like reading, but you might not necessarily like reading. You might like getting entertained. You might enjoy watching a Marvel movie and being entertained by CGI for like the, the 50 minutes, however long those movies are. Like it, it doesn't have to be deep. That's totally cool. Well, you clearly have no idea how long a Marvel movie is because they are freaking long. <laughs> The Screaming Goats and God of Lord and Thunder or Love and Thunder or whatever the stupid last Thor movie was. Hilarious. The goats. I needed the goats. But like, I... I, uh... Okay, so she's, she's very angry still. Like, she's very angry. And I get it. The internet's attacking her. And I'm not attacking her. I, I'm really just focusing... She's irrelevant, like, as a human being, she could be a very lovely person. I'm sure she's a very lovely person. I'm sure all of this is coming from a place of, like, good-hearted, kind-hearted, wanting to genuinely ask questions. But I think there's, like, a lack of, deli there's, like, poor delivery going on is the problem. But what is happening, this is why I'm calling her Lorna Dune, because she could be literally anybody. This is not the first time that this has happened in the, like, bookish social media space it's not gonna be the last time this has happened there will be a new Lorna Dune it's gonna happen we argue this all the time all the freaking time this is nothing is freaking new here so please don't be like mean to her I don't want to be mean this is just a person that is apparently working out all of their feelings on the internet for some reason but anyway so then she goes on then she goes on she likes I think this is if I have these in the right order, I think this is the next video. I might as well just look it up. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, we'll just wing it. Because I'm not really going to edit this video. This is like totally basically raw and unedited. I'm going to stick some like titles and 
end titles and then this and that's it. I'm lazy. It's Nano. This is what you're getting. This and I want to make it very clear once again. I'm going to expand on this and I want to make it very clear once again. I know some people like to hold grudges as I'm seeing in the comments. There is no judgment. There well, people are holding grudges because they really felt like you were judging them. Like the like that first video was really judgy. Like you just basically told people that their reading was invalid because you don't read classic literature and you were really upset about you're really upset about romance for some flippin' reason, and I don't know why. Like, I'm not getting why you're so angry with romance. Romance is, like, the highest earning general genre of publishing. It is huge. People like romance. As one of my commenters said, freaking Pride and Prejudice is enemies to lovers, or at least hate to love, and, like, that's a freaking classic that is, like, one of the, like, female authors, feminist author, uh, classic romance like Jane Austen's huge I'm like have you heard of her <laughs> like anyway let's keep going there's no diss there's no insulting there's no implication I am asking the problem is not that you're asking it's the way you're asking my love I I just wish you would ask a little bit better and I think you're starting to figure it out because the tone will she does change tack by the end of these videos okay so, so yes, there is, reading is, entertainment is a good part of reading, just like it's a big part of movies and television shows and everything, okay? It's the art aspect. Follow, hold on, I'm gonna see if I can try and explain this. <laughs> it's like if somebody was like, the point of a painting is for somebody to look at it and like it. And it's like, yeah, yeah, but also... The point of art is for people to have an emotion. If your art doesn't make people emote, then it's not good art. That is like the most basic explanation that anybody who is into art has ever given me. And also, art is incredibly subjective. So there are pieces that mean nothing to most people. And then there are pieces that those same pieces are going to mean like everything to somebody else. So... <laughs> I just, I just wish that this poor girl for her own sake would have, I don't know, written a whole bunch of essays first, like worked through her feelings and come, came, came at us with a better argument because the problem is, is that book talk is, just don't go to book Twitter, please. My good friend, Lorna Dune, do not go to book Twitter with these arguments. They will destroy you. I am terrified of Twitter, like absolutely terrified of Twitter. Twitter is a frightening place. I don't know how Jess Owens does it. I can't go on there. Book Twitter. I'm on the Twitter. I don't do a lot on there because I'm te always terrified that someone's going to be like, now I've got you. <laughs> so I'll stick over here. Anyway, let's, 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 let's see what she's saying. But also there's, there's more to that, right? Because it's art. Hmm? Maybe. Like I said. It's not a diss. I'm not dissing anybody. If you go to a museum to look at pieces and like them, that's cool. There's not, there's no judgment. <laughs> what really bothers me and what it's boiling down to is I hate the commodification of art under capitalism. I think that's what bothers me, right? Cause I mean, yes, but if we're going to take this out of paintings and into self hub, which again, now you're hitting into a lot of romance space because a lot of romance is actually self-pub. That isn't the commodification of art in under capitalism because you're taking the publisher out of it. I don't know. I feel like you can... This, I'm not disagreeing with this argument in general, but I feel like this argument isn't placed in the right spot right now. It's like, and like, like every movie is a reboot kind of thing it's like no original thoughts it's all the same shots like with marvel movies right Ugh, stop going after marvel i mean marvel is just here for entertainment it's okay for things to just be for entertainment but no she's not wrong it irritates all of us that every movie is not, maybe not all of us but like everybody all of us my friends that you know everything is a remake of everything else even in books like so many things are really tellings of other things there's like a big trend of that going on over the last few years of like everything being a retelling of something else i mean 
whoever's doing, oh my God, there's some publisher who's doing like a whole just YA retelling of classics and they're calling the remixes and there's a new classic like every so often. So I think a couple times a year, maybe once a year and they're interesting and they're good. And I think there's validity to doing that because you're telling classic stories, which are popular and have stood the test of time for some reason. And you're sort of modernizing them to get, to make them work for today's audience. And I think there's something kind of nice about making a story that is really good, approachable for uh, a generation that, or for a generation or a time that is separate from when it came out, because sometimes we move out of, how do I want to say this? So like, for example, when we were reading A Well of Loneliness, um, a lot of it is really, really, really applicable to today. It was written in the 20s. It's about uh, a woman who is dealing with the fact that she is a lesbian, essentially, in a time where people weren't lesbians openly and accepted and a very a time that's very different from today and also very similar from today so there's a lot of and there's not as much discourse and language and all of that around it so she doesn't even understand how to describe herself because I would argue I don't even know if our if Stephen our main character would even fully identify herself as being feminine in any way shape or form and if she would maybe even have if she had the language and the resources and the information would she have actually have identified herself more as a trans per, a trans person. I don't know. We can't make that up. It's a fictional story. I have no idea, but the questions can come up in a modern setting. But anyway, so there's a lot that's very relevant to today that seems very um, familiar in a lot of ways. And then she hits you with the racism, right? And those are things that at that time in the 20s from like a rich, wealthy white woman writing in the UK most writer, most readers probably wouldn't have batted an eye at the language, but today it like punches you in the face. So there's a lot of problematic material within classics. And that is a whole nother discussion that we're not going to get into this morning because I still have to write some words for NaNoWriMo and go to work, but that exists. We all know that. So there is some validity in my humble opinion in retelling some of these stories because you get to take actual plots and structures and stories that are part of our, like our literary history and retell them in a way that is more modern, more approachable for the modern reader, more approachable for, you know, today's teen, et cetera, et cetera. So they can still get the joy of that classic story, but they can get it in a more contemporary way. That's fine. It is frustrating that like every TV series seems to be a reboot of an old TV series. I will give her that one. Like we don't need a new Gossip Girl. We don't need a new Buffy. We don't need a new... I hope they're not doing a new Buffy. I will I will hurt somebody. Please don't reboot Buffy. I love Buffy. Don't reboot it. Don't. But anyway, I get this point. It's annoying. But stop going after Marvel movies. What's wrong with Marvel movies? They're entertaining. They're fun to watch. They don't need to be anything else. But there is an art to cinema that is not being tapped into anymore. Eh? Is this... Am I making sense? I mean, she's making sense, but there is an art to cinema that's not being tapped into anymore in a popular market. But there was always popular market movies, and then there were like Citizen Kane. Like, uh, we can talk about Citizen Kane, whether it's a good movie or not, but it's, it's consistently ranked like one of the top movies by Criterion because, and other people, because of the things that it did. I mean, Hitchcock is a popular director and his movies were popular movies because of their subject matter but their cinematography like there's there's certain things about Hitchcock and the way things were filmed that are beautiful and you see that reflected in other directors works occasionally but those are not the movies that are like the big big movies that are going to make millions and millions of dollars like studios need to make money lovey like I, I don't know I don't totally disagree with her here. She's still really angry. It's going to get a little less angry. Hold on. She's going to get less angry. Hold on. Or is there a separate part of that activity that you prefer more? So she Okay, people are dead set on hating me, but I'm going to clarify this part. I don't hate you. I just want to say that I don't hate anybody.
This is, again, not shade. Don't be mean to anybody. This is just like an archetype of an argument that happens all the time. To talk about like, liter like literary criticism, these are archetypes. You're an archetypal character, my love, Lorna Dune. You're not an archetype of Lorna Dune. Or the cookie, but anyway. But she starts to change her tone. And I hope that this is maybe like a settling of all of this. And that something doesn't spark this all off again. Because people are getting offended. So I'm going to clarify exactly what I meant by this. If you're somebody who only reads corn, and you will not corn. read anything except for corn, and it only, it has to include that, right? It has to be like maybe even the main aspect of it. Translating this into like movie talk, if you were like, hey, what movies do you enjoy? And somebody was like, corn, you'd be like, okay, is that like, that's your only genre? And they were like, yeah, I would, I, I would ask, is there another part of that activity you enjoy more than the actual medium in Are you trying to ask if people just like reading smut because it gets their, gives them the jollies? The jollies? Is that? Is that what you're asking? Because, like, I mean, sexual empowerment, go for it. Also, I don't think you've really read broadly in the romance genre because there's there's all kinds of romance genres and there's some of these lighter genres like romance and like cozy mystery and stuff they can actually deal with like um semi-heavy topics in a lighter way sometimes because you're wrapped up in what is a seemingly light and fluffy story but maybe you're talking about somebody as grief over losing a parent or uh, dealing with an ED or dealing with the PTSD of coming out of an abusive relationship. I mean, there's a lot of other things that happen in a lot of romance books that aren't just corn. Um, there are romance books that are just corn. Nothing is wrong with those. And sometimes the enjoyment is in just the outrageous nature of the plot or lack thereof of the plot, the encounters, the things that are going on. I mean, like Ice Planet Barbarians is is popular because it's engaging and it's it's ridiculous and it's a good freaking time. Like but I guess if you're not going to like Marvel movies, if you're the kind of person that can't see value in Marvel movies, which are just fun and sometimes ridiculous and outrageous and just good time, you're not going to enjoy the book equivalent of it. But I really think, are you asking if you just, if you, do you just want people to say, would you be happy if the people who read corn said, I like this because it gives me the jollies with, I get a little tingly is, would, would that satisfy you? I'm having that Jesus is the only one who can satisfy clip in my head. I don't know. Involved. I personally am very analytical about things and I also have commitment issues. So I will never say anything about myself unless I, I mean that and I've thought about it for like three years, right? So when I'm asking this, I'm, I'm asking it like, what made you decide that you liked reading even though it's just that specific type because there's no reason to separate the two and also so like when you're making an argument to a broad audience you can't just base it on self because we all have our own ways of thinking if you really want to understand how a broad audience thinks you have to remove it from yourself and like I get it and I think I think some of the problem is that I don't know how to say this and not sound like a dick, but I feel like um, when you don't have a neurotypical brain, when you're a neurodivergent, and I say this as somebody who doesn't have a neurotypical brain, and you're just trying to figure out why your brain doesn't seem to be working like everybody else's brain, when you, that moment when you realize that your brain is different than everybody else's, 
and like you're still trying to figure out how to make everybody else kind of think like you because like that's sort of like phase one where you're like I don't understand why everybody doesn't think like I do because like clearly my brain is normal because I've been in my brain for x number of years and then you have to realize that no my brain is special and different and wonderful and my brain just works a little different than everybody else's because I, I over criticize, I over analyze everything, I overthink everything, I want to know everything about things in different ways than probably she does, but like in similar ways too. Like I I feel like that's kind of what we're watching is that moment where you realize that not everybody has your neurodivergent brain. <laughs> that's that's kind of where I think we are. Ugh. We got one are more after this. Because no. for me, it's like, um, I, I'm not following. Like, I would say my dad likes music because he listens to everything and anything, right? And I feel like that's different than somebody who, like, only listens to pop music saying they like music. No, you still like music because they're both still music. A square is a rectangle, but a, uh, a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is in a square, okay? Okay, okay, okay. You can like music. And you can only like pop music, okay? <laughs> They're both the same thing. They are both rectangles. But pop music isn't all music. <laughs> Does that make any freaking sense? You can like reading. You can enjoy reading. Reading is the verb. It is the act of sitting down and physically reading or listening to a book. Reading doesn't become invalid because you are reading something with corn in it you can't be barred from saying you like music because you predominantly listen to pop music it's anyway because it's like yeah but but you only listen to one type of music and you don't like anything else that isn't this type of music so so do you you just like pop music it's very specific it's all music <laughs> I'm analytical. I analyze everything and then I, I deconstruct it and I reconstruct it and I think about it again and then I do it all over again, okay? And if you're somebody who doesn't do that and you're like, well, I say I like reading because I read. That's cool. I'm not saying that's not allowed. I'm asking for people who maybe are like me and analyze stuff. Thought process. I'm asking for thought processes. But if you're somebody who's like, I hate discussing things and analyzing things. I read because I like to read. Shut up. Then that's cool. That's fine. I've said it in the comments a couple of times, but I'm really asking the metaphysical question of like, when meta do you decide? The metaphysical quest. Okay. That you like a medium rather than- She's making me yell. I'm very sorry. I'm not gonna yell. I, I'm, I'm telling her not to yell and I'm yelling. I'm sorry. I don't mean to yell. It's very early in the morning and this is only my first cup of coffee. I need like two more to be human. Then just enjoying being entertained. You follow? I don't know why these two things need to be separated. And this is why people are getting angry. This is why I'm seeing TikToks that are like, well, apparently now we need to justify our reading. So like, this is why I like this book. And this is why I like this book. Like, my good friend, my good friend Lorna Dune, I read so many different things. I will read weird monster smut. Not a lot, but sometimes that's what I'm in the mood for. And I will read it. I read Junji Ito because I enjoy the weird, freaking, twisted, horror brain that he has. That's a valid argument. I read Mother Thing because it's freaking ridiculous, all right? I like Virginia Woolf, again, because of her wordplay. Uh, I don't know. I'm just grabbing shit that's sitting around on my thing. Um... I don't know. Why can't I find any books? I have a whole fucking wall of books. I can't find any books. The point is people read for different reasons and they don't need to go any deeper than like, I find enjoyment in this. They really don't need to go any deeper unless you want to do literary criticism, unless you're going to be doing like in-depth book reviews. And that is part of what you want to do for your life. But people don't have to, they don't have to overanalyze and do everything like your brain does, my darling. Like they just, they just don't. They just don't. It's okay. It is valid. If you are at all triggered by any of this and it's making you angry, just let's take a deep breath. And 
Let's finish this one and do the last one and let me have some more coffee. Just because I'm being entertained by something doesn't mean I enjoy the medium or the activity. I've been to the theater a couple of times. I don't like the theater. I've been entertained at the theater, but that doesn't mean I like it or enjoy the theater. Okay, that's you. That's you. I love the ballet. What else do you like? Yes. Okay. Okay. Or, or even better, why choose such a broad genre of like, I like to read instead of like, I enjoy a reading text. You see what? Reading isn't a genre. I'm already yelling. Why am I yelling? Because I need more coffee. Reading isn't a genre. Reading is an action. Reading is a verb. Reading is a thing that you do. I like. Oh my God. I like, I like cooking, but if when I say I like cooking, I only make Italian dishes, does that mean I can't say I like cooking? Do I have to say I only like cooking Italian dishes? Is this not making sense to anybody else? Because mm. I'm saying like, why, why choose that category? Yes, maybe, no. Ugh. Here's the last one. We're just gonna like go through the last one and I need to get I need to get on with my life. The tone changes and I and I really hope that this means the tone is totally gonna shift. She's gonna like 180. I always wanna say 360. That's not correct. That means she's right back where she started. She's gonna 180 a little bit here. And I hope that this means that like whatever thing that was bugging her is kind of like dying down and I hope that oops, I hope that this means that like this is gonna end <laughs> because I don't want people to be getting attacked on the internet and again I'm not trying to attack her this is all the arguments she could literally be anybody I'm not blurring her because she posted all of this on a public platform I think she says it in one of these videos that she posted on a public platform to have people respond so I feel like that's an invite to me being able to like respond to her so this is my response to my friend Lorna Dune but uh, let's just get it over with because I need more coffee and I have like I have to get to my nano I have a very long day ahead of me for class but let's chit chat shall we because i, I want to let you guys know the results that i've seen so far in the comments the first one but she does look cute here she looks super cute here super cute here being that everybody practically reads for escape of huh practically everybody reads for escapism fine i also just want to say that she's got a lot of like a few tiktoks about like loving twilight There's nothing wrong with Twilight. Like, I love Twilight, but, like, I just feel like if you're going to be, like, a huge Twilight fan, you can't be judging other people for their reading tastes. I, I just, not in this way. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I didn't watch a lot of those videos, but, like, maybe I, I'm misrepresenting this here, but I feel like she was, like, into Twilight. I mean, I was into Twilight. I stood in line for a very long time to go to the midnight showing of the first movie. I got freaking drunk on spiked hot chocolate during that. That was giddy. I had a good time. Um, but yeah, I just feel like you can't judge people for liking smut. Anyway, that's what I found at least with that being like the most common answer. The second most common answer is I don't know, I just like a read. <laughs> Which, yeah. I don't know why she said it like that. But she's not yelling at us, so I'm going to move on. Or like, kind of being condescending. So, well, she's being a little condescending there. But like, it's not as aggressive. So. Let it slide. Completely fair. Sometimes brains don't like to deeply analyze things. Especially brains that aren't mine. My brain likes to analyze everything. Okay? Um... We're going to call this progress. I hope this is the end of this saga. Uh, oh, a lot of people were like, well, what do you mean? Entertainment is the whole point of reading. And I'm like, that's not the whole point of what. We're going to back up for a second. 
she's gonna say that's not the point of why I read is the whole point of reading and I'm like that's not the whole point of why I read so that's why I asked the question actually because it blew my mind how many people were like well I just read for fun okay so the reason for asking all of these questions and for starting this whole thing was because you just wanted to have a discussion about the different reasons why people read my advice is the next time you want to start a conversation like this don't do it in such an aggressive manner because the delivery is what has brought us on this whole arc if you had come on to book talk and said hey book talkers i like to read really critically and like my brain overanalyzes everything and i see people always saying they like to just read for fun and it doesn't like compute in my little brain, but I'd love to know all the reasons why you read, because I just think it's a really interesting discussion. That's going to get people just discussing things. But what happened <laughs> is that you came on, and whether you meant to or not, and I would like to give her the benefit of the doubt, that she really truly didn't mean to just like, bitch slap everybody and yell at them and be like, why do you read? But she kind of did. So... I think I just I think that's why you got the reaction you got, my friend. And I'm like, okay, well, what what does that mean? Because entertainment is only like the caveat to get me to read a book. Like it has. To I'm out of coffee. Just that needed to be a thing. Like it's totally. This better end soon. And then after that, oh, we're in for a wild ride, buddy. Okay, one second. Also, having uh, I'm I'm noticing people hold grudges. A little bit. It was two weeks ago, guys. Okay, but like, I know it's two weeks ago and that feels like a long time in like internet world, but first of all, your video has been replayed for like days and days and days and days and days and days. Uh, I don't remember when all of these came out, but they're like in the last couple weeks, but like, or a couple days, but like, first of all, when things are on the internet, they're on the internet forever, which means that people can be upset forever. But also like you really came at people, my darling, even if you didn't mean to, you really came at them and they're really mad. Like people don't like being talked down to and you kind of talked down to people. And a lot of us make reading a big part of our personality. So you basically told us that what we do and that the thing that we love isn't valid. And I think if we put this in like other contexts that were maybe seemingly more like um, dramatic, but if I said that like, I don't know what, but like, if I said that something that you find really dear wasn't valid and came at it in a very, came at you in a very aggressive way, you'd be really offended too. And you'd be very hurt. And that might last for a while, especially if you kept seeing that same offense over and over and over again in your feeds, because it's being stitched and replayed and redone and retalked about and this, that, and the other thing and responded to. It didn't just like happen once two weeks ago and then it was over. It's, it's really been going on for a while. So I understand. I don't think they're grudges. I think that just, people are genuinely very offended and hurt and they have that right to be offended and hurt and I also I'm sure that you've received some vitriol because the internet is mean and if you're upset and hurt by that my friend I would you are totally valid and you have every place to be upset and hurt by that and I don't think that people should be mean to you I think that this is just a poorly phrased this was a poorly worded attempt at having a discussion I don't know what the first video was I'm not going to justify that, but I think everything, the other videos today all started because you didn't word your question in a way that would get a good response. <laughs> you worded it in a way that was going to get people angry. Two weeks ago. Anyways, so I, I do want to say this. Um, obviously, there's no passive aggressiveness in my tone. There's no condescension. I just be talking. This is just how I sound leave me alone <laughs> but yeah I feel like she's probably gotten a lot of like hate hate and uh, that's not right can we not hate on people like she's a person with an opinion that stated it poorly uh, but like it's okay to respond but let's let's not like hate hate people that that goes to really bad places I'm I'm thinking back to the buckler days of book drama and like some of the things that happen um like 
romance deception is it romance deception is that her name it's gianna i think she got like a glitter bomb and like all this other stuff like can we not can we not do stuff like that because we can get crazy people can get crazy like let's not get crazy okay <coughs> excuse me in that same vein i have a lot of people being like well you know people don't have to justify themselves to you and it's like well yeah i'm not the queen of books i like that you're self-aware about that now However, the way that you worded it was like, you have to justify yourself to me because I, da, 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 da. again, it's about tone and delivery, but I think there's some growth. I think there's some growth. They don't have to get them from me to read them. Like, it doesn't even matter. Right. And also people being like, um, well, nobody owes you an explanation. And it's like, I know that. But I asked the question on a public platform. So if people wanted to comment. They could. <laughs> so I, you know, whatever. Basically, at the end of the day, I'm asking why you like to read, what you find compelling about it. This is the way you should have asked it from the beginning. We wouldn't have had to go on this journey. You know, if it's just fun, what's fun about it? Elaborate if you can. If not, you could just be like, I like to read. And I'm liking those comments too, because honestly, yeah, sometimes you just like to read. So <laughs> you can comment on this video. Finally! We got there. I feel like, I feel like this has been such a journey. I hope you enjoyed the ride. On the other video, I don't care. And the, the what else comment is because um, for me, literature, it's art, right? That's what it is. So I also have the question for more relaxed readers, right? That's what I'm dubbing you guys. I hope you don't mind. Um, All right. I can be a relaxed reader. Not mad about that one. How do you deal with those more complex parts of a book, right? Do you only read books that don't contain those complexities? Or is it something that you just like? What do you mean by complexities, though? Are you talking about thematic complexities, structural complexities? Like what kind of, any complexity? Questions. Pretend you... Do not see. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you how do you interact with those in a relax? I want to know what specific book she's thinking of. Like, I want more like context evidence, like evidential context. Like, what are the books that she is thinking of when she asks these questions? Like, um, how do you deal with the complexities? Well, what book are you thinking of when you think about complexities? Um, are you talking about? I keep thinking about Virginia Woolf because she's literally like in front of me. So I'm reading a lot of Virginia Woolf this month because it's Nano, and I just feel like it's perfect for Nano. Like, Orlando, are you talking about, like, the complexities of Orlando and the commentary on, like, gender and um, the way that Wolf plays with, like, timeline and stuff like that and sort of, like, a twist on almost, like, a vampire trope? Is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking about just... What are you talking about? <laughs> I want to know what books you mean. Like, I just want to know what books are in the back of your head when you ask this question. Next way. That it's the way. Huh? Yes. Okay. I've been staring at this hair for a while. I think I should put them more to the side. So I'm going to do that. Okay, bye. All right. So, like, that was everything. That was the journey that we went on. I'm kind of glad that we got, like, through this whole arc of saga. And we got to a point where she became self-aware enough to be like... I just want to know how why people read and brought the tone down and everything. But like, I hope this means that we are done and I don't have to talk about Lorna Dune anymore because. Whew. All right. So I'm done with this. I need to get more coffee. I need to get some words on the page. I need to do a bunch of stuff. I have to pack. I have to do a bunch of stuff tonight because I got to go somewhere tonight right after my shift because I got a bunch of stuff to do tomorrow, like an hour away from my house. Anyway. I would love to know, wait, generally your thoughts on this whole saga. I would love to know why you read. Because why not? Let's talk about why we read. I don't care what your answer is. Just let me know. Um, again, please don't be mean to anybody ever. Archetype of an argument that we have on this in this space. Like all the flipping time. Let's not go back to the Buckler days. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I am not rehashing it. But we are not going back to the Buckler days. Okay? Okay. Ms. Buckwheat was a while ago. That was a whole drama. We are never doing that again. I will not let this community do that again, especially not on this page. But hopefully we've all learned something about how we ask questions and that we all now feel like this is like a hug. I want to like hug you all and be like, it's okay how you read. You read whatever you want. Okay. Okay. Did you like your hug? 
read whatever we want. Whatever makes you happy, my friends. That is the point is a short, we get one trip around this goddamn son of ours. We, get a, we, we are on this planet for one flip in life, unless you believe in reincarnation and that's a whole nother discussion. But this is your one life in this body and I, I enjoy it. Please enjoy it to the best of your abilities. Do whatever you want. If you want monster smut with prehensile weens, go for it. Just live it up. Go to the farm and milk some monsters. Like I, I just want you guys to have your best life. <laughs> I need coffee. I hope you enjoy this really like raw and uncut little video that I'm pumping out because I just couldn't let this sit. And uh, yeah, uh, remember to like and subscribe. And uh, oh, I have a disc. No, I have a um. I do have a Discord. It's part of my Patreon. So if you want to join my Patreon, there's a link down below. I'll, I try to like pin it in the comments now. Uh, I don't know if I'll remember to do that because I'm scatterbrained. Um, but yeah, otherwise I'll see you guys in my next video, whatever it may be, because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. Bye.